Hi, everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of Let's Be Direct. This is a podcast where we talk about all things trucking, supply chain, and the future of the industry, which, as you know, is direct. So uh, I am Andrew Rivera, head of marketing for Lane Access, joined by Johnny Nguyen. He's head of uh, Shipper Partnerships. And of course, joined as always by Rick Burnett, our CEO and Lane Access founder. So today we're going to be talking about truck parking. And guys, this is, uh, it's an interesting issue that I don't think the general public is really aware of. Obviously, during the pandemic, everyone saw all the supply chain issues. And when they think of supply chain issues, they think of empty shelves and high prices and not being able to get the, the stuff they need when they need it. But from a trucker's perspective, parking is literally the number one concern they have. I want to roll off some stats before we really kind of dive into this conversation. So recent study, there is one parking spot for every 11 trucks on the road. So think about that. These guys have hours of service uh, limits to deal with. So they can't be driving all the time looking for a trucking spot. But one out of 11 uh, trucks on the road have a spot. So where do the other 10 trucks park? They have nowhere to park, That's right? 98% of truck drivers say they regularly experience difficulty finding safe parking and they're forced to park on an exit ramp or on the side of an interstate. Long haul drivers average 12% of their annual income, approximately $5,500 a year, just by looking for parking because they spend about an hour a day looking for parking. So that's wasted fuel, it's wasted productivity, and in a lot of cases, they have to pay for the parking. And then finally, this is what really gets me. In a recent survey just uh, conducted uh, by ATRI, which is the American Transportation Research Institute, drivers ranked parking as the number one challenge they face. So it's not freight rates. It's not broker transparency. Uh, it, it's, it's not detention time. It's truck parking. So let me ask you, are you surprised by that being the number one concern of independent truckers? No, because if you think about logistically, if you get in the wrong way in the car, it's easy to flip around. And so for trucks, obviously pulling, even if they're empty, you know, tens of thousands of pounds and trying to navigate within there, there's only a certain amount of within the demographics of the highways and different roads that they travel, ability for them to park in a general statement, Right. And now you have to have lots that are kind of geared toward truck parking specifically. And, you know, I know over the years, this has always been, you know, a, a an issue. It's been going on from the legislative point for 25 plus years, and they haven't done nothing about it. But from a logistics standpoint, prior to this, you know, when we had paper logs, we could navigate the waters a little bit easier. Right, because we ran out of time or whatever else. We have our other set of log books that we pull out and we find a place to park and and it isn't as a major of an issue or not issue isn't the right word, stress. And I think that that's the part that's really starting to chap me and bother me is the amount of pressure and stress on these independent carriers in all aspects. And truck parking sounds like a very simple thing but you know when they're calculating trying to figure out they're running out of hours and now they have electronic logging device and now they have to find parking that elevates that blood pressure it elevates all the health conditions and all these other factors that you know nobody's really taken into account and quite frankly we got to fix it yeah john i'm going to give you the floor in a second but i want to follow that up with uh, a story i read and this is happening all over the country it's happening in los angeles East Coast cities everywhere where truckers are having to park in places where they're simply not allowed to park. So in Columbus, Georgia, uh, recently a guy who owns a small business owner, he owns a, a workout gym, right? And it's it's on a site of where a, fo a former Walmart used to be. So it's a big parking lot. There's other businesses there. But this guy who owns a workout a gym made a complaint that all these truckers were illegally parking on his lot. They were trashing the place. They were dumping trash. 
And so they basically got into a quarrel with each other that spilled out into social media, into TV news. It was actually covered by some of the local news stations. And so what gets me about this is that these are business owners, small business owners being pitted against each other when they should really be on the same side, right? And, and so this is sort of uh, symptomatic of, of, of what's going on in trucking, that they're not taking care of these, these small little guys who are trying to uh, run a profitable business, a profitable, profitable small business, and instead they're actually pitting small business owners against each other. So, I mean, it, it, to me, that's endemic of, of the problem that, that trucking is, is creating in, in this country. Would you agree? Yeah, 100 percent. And I think, you know, everybody listening to this, all the independent truckers across the way, um, they already know this issue. So the, the question is how we fix it. You know, what, what is the way that we can fix truck parking and level you know, the information that's being accessed to them on, quite frankly, an on-demand. Because if you think about it, if you're sitting here and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go eat, I can jump on an app and I can query and I can find a place to go eat, right? And it's free. Um, and some services you want to pay for and there's some services you don't want to pay for. Quite frankly, truck parking is not a service that truckers should have to pay for. It should be something that is re readily accessible to them from an information source that they can find when they need it in the nearest place so they can get off into a safe place, they can rest, and all the other dynamics that everybody pushes the trucker as the fault, you know, um, is crazy. And, and, you know, even like accidents today, if you look at the statistical data, and truckers are one of the, the least amount of, of, you know, at fault in accidents. They're the safest people on the road, and they're the ones that get blamed for anything, and it's always heightened if anything does happen, right? And so going specifically into truck parking, we have to figure out a way that there is, this is, an, this is 100% a legislative issue that, we have to unite as independent carriers and come together and force a change. This stuff's been going on for decades. And from a legislative, so how do you do it? <clears throat> well, how does anything ever happen in a legislative change? It's a body of numbers uniting. And that's the only way you're ever going to get this because they know this is an issue. The question is, you know, what's the, you know, what's the break that gets fixed? The one that's squeaking. The squeaky wheel gets the oil and we need to squeak the shit out of this wheel and get the oil on it and get it fixed because from a legislative and not push additional cost into the independence to have something that is a right of information that should be available to them. Now there is movement on Capitol Hill and, and Johnny, why don't you, uh, yeah, as I just want to touch on that. So just last month, um, both the house and the Senate, uh, proposed, uh, a new a, a new bill it's called the truck parking safety improvement act um basically what the bill states is it, it'll allocate 755 million dollars over the course of three years for construction of parking uh, parking spaces all over um, the u.s and but the main component of it is that uh these are for they, there will be no charge for it so one cool thing to note is it is it did get by um by partisan support on it um, and there, it's just in the interest stage. What are, you, what's your thoughts on this particular game? Well, I mean, yeah, it's a great step forward. The question is, is that you know, um, we got to move it past talk and get it into reality. You know, and that's the part that I have no time and energy into legislative stuff because I, you know, it's a bunch of talking and introducing a bill. There's a problem. Fix it. Why do you have to introduce nine different things and talk to nine different people? Fix the problem. And this shit gets, keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And, and, you know, so what I want to talk about is a solution on how we can come together 
and we want we need feedback from you guys, the independents, and and to help us how you guys think we can unite and collectively together. I'll go there in a second, and 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 stand up for the independent guys because I've been a decade into building technology for the independents, and my single goal is to build higher profitability and give a better work environment and better profitability and a better life to the millions of independent drivers that are out there. That's been my single mission. And if you look at what we have built, you know, there's no denying that. And so, you know, from a data standpoint, that's what we're good at. You know, we're numbers guys. So use us to push numbers into these guys and give us the power behind these numbers and hopefully together, collectively, we can make a change and get this implemented. And it's not additional cost on down the road for truckers to park the truck and take a rest. I mean, that's crazy. You know, I mean, that's the issue that we're talking about. Some place for you to go and lay down and take a break. Really? I mean, why are we even debating this? This is a waste of time. But... It's an issue that's got to be fixed, so you have to talk about it because talking gets people riled up to actually do something, and that's what we have to do. We have to get this to where independence guys share this and push it out and go, look, we got to come together and change this and get frustrated because frustration is what's going to get something to change because they're going to listen. So I do want to transition um, sort of into how this trucking issue relates to the overall treatment of, of uh, truckers by the feds, frankly. Um, but first I wanna ask you, you, you're a former partner in a trucking company. Uh, how did you deal with the parking shortage or, or was this an issue for you? Well, we, we were in Lion Hall, so we, you know, we did more of, we didn't really do a lot of over, over the road where it was independent type. So we didn't have a large independent network that we were finding freight for. And so they are out there for a long time and they had to find, and, and, but they did. And, you know, quite frankly, it wasn't as major of an issue at that point in time because, you know, we were running logs, paper logs. And, you know, the guy wasn't as under pressure of finding something immediately because, you know, he could navigate around that situation. Well, now, you know, they plug in and everything's recorded and they download those logs and then you're over and you were trying to find parking, you're going to get a ticket or, you know, and various other things. So it's different, you know, and in January 2020, everybody knows it's changed. And so, you know, we have to get change into visibility into these and provide a, a service to the guys that are out there on the road. For us, it was it it wasn't something that I spent any time in trying to fix a decade plus ago, because it wasn't a complaint that we were getting from our drivers that saying, "Hey, I can't find it." You know, uh, so quite frankly, it's been more since I've been in the technology side of building this network. And really highlighted, you know, recently that. You know, we need to come together and fix this. Is it from a shipper perspective? Is it, um, this is one expense that I did not know uh, uh, these these drivers or uh, carrier companies have to deal with. And just doing the math, they have to pay, let's say, upwards of twelve dollars per night for for truck parking. This thing adds up. Um, well, and I think if if you listen to my videos, you know what I'm trying to get the independent carriers to really focus on is a mindset change and look at your trucking company as a profitability center and look at, you know, freight rates are important. So is fuel. We're working on a massive fuel program. I'm really excited on rolling that out. Uh, that's going to be, you know, uh, a big play for the network um, behind getting insurance options that are, that are saving money, you know, maintenance, through the network of technology is, is what we're doing is is using that and providing a tool for these guys that are on the road that now, <clears throat> yeah, I remember when I started 10 years ago, everybody's like, oh, truckers will never use this phone because their hands are too big and they can't figure, and all these other naysayer things that happened. And now these guys are one of the most tech savvy guys that are out there, right? And they're utilizing their time and their resets and they're waiting for to get loaded or at detention times that they're sitting there, they're using their time as an investment 
and now they're becoming an asset and a tool. And so we're using this technology to take that dollar and, you know, how much can, how far, much further can we stretch that dollar and how much savings can we get off of that dollar? Because at the end of the day, what I want the independents to understand and my mission behind this is that they build their trucking company operation into a profit center. And, and having data behind that profit center is something that if their health changes or they want to transition into doing something else or they or their, their time is up and they, they want to spend time with their in a retirement type of thing, they have an asset that they can sell. And that asset is going to be behind the equipment, but it's also behind the data and the relationships that he's established. And that's all going to be provable into a network. And so now he's got a, a significant asset of a company that he's built. And so, yes, we're talking about truck parking, but truck parking is, you know, a tip of the spear in really what is unifying the independent carriers to, to bring change into this, into this network for the better. So I want to follow up on that um, because, look, I, I, I don't want to be part of the crowd that is just constantly piling on Congress or piling on, you know, the DOT or the FMCSA for not getting things done. I mean, this is progress, right? It's a $755 million parking improvement plan. Who knows how much red tape it's going to have to go through before it's really implemented, right? But having said that, you know, last week, Rick, you, you were on a radio show, uh, TNT Radio Live, with a Charlie Claiborne, and he hosts the, uh, the highway show. It was a great talk. And Charlie kept pointing out that, look, this issue of truck parking has, has been debated on Capitol Hill since the mid-'90s. And if they can't fix this problem 25 years later, what can they fix? And, and you guys seem to kind of uh, be in agreement on that. Do, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I think, you know, the truck parking is a necessity. Because why are they trying to park? Because they need a break. That's like a no-brainer. Duh. Right? Okay. The other, slated, other parts of the legislation have to deal with money. Now, you're in a totally different conversation, a totally different animal when you're talking about changing the way that business is done in the money side, in the freight side, in who's controlling that freight. That's a different conversation. That's a different legislation. And you're going to get a lot of resistance when you start to do that because you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in managed fees that you're talking about effectively removing. You're going to get a lot of attention when you talk about that. And, you know, so that's why, in my opinion, reform is done. This isn't a reform. This is an initiative that needs to happen. In the freight side of it, when you're talking about reform, you know, you know about 25 years to get parking, think about how long it's going to take to get, reg the, you know, regulations to have reform on the money side of it. That'll, not, in my opinion, that'll never happen. It's already in place, and they still find the resistance. They ain't going to show you. And an independent, what are they going to do? Why aren't they going to show you? Well, because they got 30, 40, 50, 100,000 other options that, that you're not going to force me to do anything because I have options. And until them options are gone, well, what's the network? The network is 97% of the smaller independent. So until they unite to force change, it's never going to change because they're not going to. You're talking about the money side of it. Could landowners kind of help provide maybe a space for these for these drivers to also um, depart their cars? Or... Well, I mean, you know, let's just look at look at the world we live in today, right? This is 2023, and how much infrastructure in the way of doing business is different today than it was, you know, say 10 years ago. Like for an example, okay? The, from a government infrastructure, there is a ton of real estate that is unoccupied. People work less from offices. People do video calls. People, there's a transformation into the daily environment of businesses that if you look at the landscape across the U.S., there is plenty of opportunity to turn spaces into a revenue producer for the owner of that, but it's funded by the government because they're implementing a safety initiative for these guys to rest. 
And so when you have a building that has no use value and sitting there empty, flip that into a truck parking space that the government purchases or leases from the the owner, but paying for that to provide a service for something that is a highway safety initiative. But then, it is, not to cut you off, but then I also see another issue there, which is local zoning laws, ordinances that may not allow trucks to park, say, in a corporate parking lot. And now you get into even more red tape and more red tape. Yeah, but yeah. It, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. You're not going to send these trucks down a street for them to go park. There is plenty of outside spaces, right, all across every city. And truckers, they'll go... 50, 100 miles, 150 miles, 200 miles, something. They don't like it, but they'll do that to go pick up a load, right? Well, they're tracking everything through an ELD. So when they deliver the load and they have to go parking, and if their government facilitated parking is 20 miles, then they should get a discount off their taxes or something from their IFTR or something in a tax difference for them to go park as a benefit because that's the only option for them to go. It's not a cost. Number one, they're not paying for parking. And two, they've already delivered. And so so now they're providing information and infrastructure for them to go rest. And the nearest one's 20 miles. It's not costing them money to go rest. So they're going to use the infrastructure of what is, you know, the landscape of, of, and it has to be designed, but it's not difficult to do. I mean, quite frankly, I could do it for them in the form of putting together a plan into geocoding all these government facility parking and tying it into a map and then alerting them and giving them directions of directly where it is and then cutting off, you know where you delivered the load, right? Or if you if you need to reset and you're going to go someplace, you have a mapped to that location, you know the exact miles, it's in, you're already recording it, right? So, you know, these are, this is not an infrastructure difficult to be able to implement. It's just, we have to have their support and their dollars from a government standpoint that's going to bring this initiative together in order to fix it. Well, it shouldn't be difficult, but it seems like they're making it difficult. And just to circle back to the, the, the point I was making before, uh, when you were, were talking with Charlie on the radio show last week, you know, is the big issue right now in Capitol Hill is not parking. It's broker reform, right? So Charlie's point was, look, if, if they've been working on parking since the mid-90s and they can't figure that out, what are they going to figure out with broker reform? What are, what are they going to figure out with detention pay? What are they going to figure out as far as making sure these truckers are, are not getting taken advantage? Well, I've already, I've already said my piece on that. I mean, you're talking about the money side of it, and that's a different animal you're going to fight, and, and that's a different battle. The only way to fix that is to come together and go directly with who you're hauling the freight for, and there's technology out there today that can do that. And, you know, what's the benefit? The benefit is there's no negative. Both sides win. You're negotiating with directly who's got the freight. Everything's tracked. It's real-time communication. It's direct pay. It's all digitalized, you know, so why isn't the network having hundreds of thousands of loads moving through it every day? Because I don't have a network. I don't have the independence in there telling their shippers that they can go direct. You're called, you'll carve off the 20, 30, 40. Everything will be transparent because you're dealing with directly who's got the freight and negotiating directly. We don't mark it up. The guy's paying a thousand bucks, you're getting a thousand bucks. We take a transaction model. It's the same model of, of you order something online. They're not taking a margin. They're taking a transaction. Right? Any other model. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a platform. Airbnb. You use Airbnb. They don't market. They'll tell where the renter is and everything else. You know what it is. You get paid the renter, and then they take a transaction. Strike. Takes a transaction for processing the thing. That's what we are. We're a system that has been built that efficiency system that allows the independence to connect with who's got the freight. It's a network. And that's the part that, for me, I'm not going to get into broker reform because I don't believe in it. I don't believe you're ever going to change that because it's too much money. And you're fighting a, something that if they do do something, they'll just navigate around it and then they'll do something else. So like right now, the guy's supposed to tell you what it is. If you ask him for it, they'll just walk you and won't give you any more freight. What's the point? 
Is that reform? I mean, maybe it is to some people. Um, but if you want to make more money and you want to control your own destiny, build direct contracts with who you're actually hauling the freight for. All this freight's being moved. The, you know, the crazy thing about this is, is that all this freight's already being moved today. Who are you hauling the freight for? Right? And and you're hauling the freight for the shipper. You know, so once the independents really, you know, gravitate around that and 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 start to push power in the numbers that refrigerated flatbed drive and and they they're all come both sides are gonna win because collectively they're doing the work. That you know, there's just never been over the years a system and you know, and I also understand the independent guys not trusting anybody and, you know, not trusting because they've heard this stuff before. You know, the quote unquote competitors, you know, they rolled out a, a model that, you know, gives the price to the shipper and then they subcontract. It's a broker model. It's an electronic broker model. So, of course, they've heard this before. Shipper direct freight and all this other stuff. You know, and and over the years... You know, how many times have we been to approach to change this model? <laughs> you know, I mean, and so as recently as four or five months ago. So, you know, it's the money side of this is is where that initiative has to be from the independents coming together in a network. Collectively, when they do come together in a network, you're going to get all the freight because you're doing the work. They'll have to come and deal direct. And there's no negative. I mean. Today, what do they do? They send the load over to a large trucking company or a 3PL or whoever else, and then they subcontract it out to here. Well, they contact them to contact you on the where the load is, and if you're calling the if they're calling the trucking company, they're calling the driver. I mean, that's the triangle, and it's inefficient where they can go direct and have communication directly with the driver. It's going to change the game because there's no inefficiency in the process. So. It's going to allow, now you as an owner-operator and an independent guy, you just build your connections and your contracts with thousands of shippers. I mean, over the last year, if you're an owner-operator or, you know, independent guy, right? I mean, how many shippers have, are you dealing directly with? How many shippers are you getting direct payment from? Is that one, five, a hundred? If that answer's not that, then... Look at a change and say, hey, look, this is a process. How do I change this for the better? To me, the, the bottom line is we have to stop demonizing small truckers for just trying to survive. You know, we, we need to stop ticketing these guys and citing them for, for just trying to find a place to get some rest because of what they are forced to do in terms of hours of service and start showing these guys the respect they deserve. So. Um, guys, with that, I think uh, we're, we're going to wrap this up. I do want to point out that uh, the Lane Access uh, Network app, we are in our roadmap uh, looking at integrating uh, a parking app, maybe working with some companies out there. Uh, but that is in our roadmap because, again, that's that's something that uh, you independent drivers obviously need, and, and that's one more aspect uh, we want to help you with. So having said all that, guys, thanks for a great discussion. I think it's an important topic. And a lot of people just don't realize how big it is. So uh, until next time, thanks for joining us on uh, Let's Be Direct. Stay safe out there on the roads, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.